welcome back to Satisfactory Update 4. Now, my episode uh, yesterday was um, based on, uh, let's call it uh, misinformation, as in an inability to uh, actually look at the recipes. So while uh, the content that I had in regards to aluminium was not entirely wrong, because unless you have the alternate recipes, you do need coal and uh, so forth for uh, a proper aluminium setup. However, I did have the uh, alternate recipes available to me and uh, thus the uh, coal setup and stuff that I did was actually redundant. Now, before we go into the episode, I'm going back to the base to pick up some uh, cable. But um, I wanted to uh, to thank you all for uh, the feedback that I've received so far on uh, what I talked about in episode one, which is the um, the mental health issues and how to organize my recordings. Um, I decided that that was kind of an ad hoc decision. That okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm going to start stream. So uh, earlier today, I streamed for three hours and forty something minutes, and that video is also going to be available here on YouTube, or rather that stream is going to be available here on YouTube as a video. Now, I'm not going to stream everything I do, because that would be too much, but uh, I am going to stream um, when I feel like it. Uh, I sadly cannot uh, hold a specific schedule on my streaming, as explained in yesterday's video, but I will uh, stream as often as I feel up to it, and uh, there is demand for it. I have uh, made a, a role in my Discord server where you can um, opt in, so you can get notifications for when I uh, intend to go online on Twitch, and also actual notification when I go online. But uh, you can also find me on Twitch, obviously, uh, whereas uh, the link will be added to my descriptions. But it's basically twitch.tv slash Caledorn. So, shouldn't be that hard. And I will be releasing that as a companion series. So, the stream that I did today will be episode 1.5, but it will not be in this playlist. It will be in a separate playlist, because I don't want people who are following the series for the shorter episodes to have to deal with uh, varying length episodes of anything from 1 to maybe... Well, this might be optimistic, but 5-6 hours. That is definitely optimistic. That's not something that I... Uh, I don't want to mix those two. But I will have uh, episode something point something in that companion episode for those of you who are interested to or interested in just watching me build, uh, interested in following the uh, the um, process of what I'm doing, watching me waffling around, which is something that I frequently do, and so forth. So. It's also an option for you to put something on if you want something long to have running in the background. Um, Satisfactory is a game that takes time and uh, it is my favorite game in this genre without question. Although Dyson Sphere Program has a fairly strong, let's say very strong, mm -hmm. second place. Okay, uh, now the aluminium... Recipes have changed dramatically since um, update 3. This, of course, is because you need a lot more of the aluminium casings, so that is the reason why they've changed so dramatically. 
Uh, I should interject here that I also have been slug hunting because I needed uh, power cells. Uh, we'll get back to that. But I tapped this pure copper node here and I've overclocked it to the maximum because I don't have access to the Mark III miners uh, at this point because of the changes. So this one is outputting 600 copper ore per minute and the coal belt has been cut off there. I'm leaving it there in case I need the coal for something else, but this belt is now copper ore. Uh, on the other side of, uh, of the um, aluminium outpost, there was the uh, old copper node, which I believe is a normal one that I was tapping for uh, for the one of the uh, recipes. Um, I think that was the, let's see. It was the Alclad aluminium sheets that required 180 copper ingots uh, in the eight assemblers that I had for those uh, back in the old uh, update. And that node is out here. I had to overclock that as well. And it seems that I might have had that underclocked. I might have forgotten to put a power cell in there when I did that. No, this was at 180. That means that I'm currently inputting 780 copper ore into the base or the outpost, which is now more a base than an outpost, to be honest. I moved the copper smelting from upstairs down here to this lower plateau. And I have, I think it's 26 smelters or is it 28? Uh, let me see. It's a very quick calculation. It is 780 divided by 30, which gives me 26. So there's 13 on each side. But I've split the belts up uh, a little bit untraditionally. I've got this one coming in here, and it's supplying these uh, six smelters. Here, one, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Or as I promised in the uh, in the uh, comments, uh, I could do that in Norwegian. I did that in the stream, but maybe three and a half hours is too much. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's thirteen on this side. But seven of them are supplied from the pure node, and six of them on this side is supplied from that node out there. Now the other belt, or the uh, the other part of the 600 ore coming in from the uh, pure node is going to the other side uh, and is exactly enough to supply the 13 smelters on this side. Now this smelting array outputs 780, which is, as uh, we should be aware of now, the maximum uh, Mark V conveyor belt is capable of supplying. I also set up this hypertube here because, uh, yeah, reasons. The refinery has been changed rather dramatically. Um, there is now, instead of having... I don't know if that blinks in the recording. If it does, I apologize. Uh, that is the new update that has done that. So this used to be 12 refineries making alumina solution with a basic recipe that took bauxite and water and it outputted alumina solution and silica. Now I'm using the alternate recipe here, which is sloppy alumina, which takes 150 bauxite and 150 water per minute and outputs 180 alumina solution. Uh, Wally and I have both been very confused as to why this one has been termed sloppy alumina, because this would more logically be pure alumina. But uh, I don't know. So I don't have four of them. I have six of these. And that means that I need... Um, 180, 360, 720, 900... I have written... That I need 900 water. Is that correct? 
Now I got very uncertain here. 180 times 6 is 1080, so I need 1080 water. That doesn't make sense, but okay. 1080, so that means I need to adjust the, uh, the water extractors, because there's only one water extractor on each side here. And the reason for that is the other refineries, which have now been increased from a total of uh, four refineries making aluminium scrap to 12 refineries making aluminium scrap. And each of these outputs 60 water per minute. So by having 12 of these, I am outputting into the loop um, a total of, see here, 720 water. Uh, and if I need 1,080, what is that? 1,080 minus 720 is 360 divided by 2 is 180. So I need 180 water from these water extractors on each side, uh, which means I'm going to have to overclock them. Uh, that's not a problem. I do have power cells uh, lying around, so 180. Yeah, that's exactly 150%. This process using the alternate recipes requires a great deal of power cells if you want to do it the way that I've done it. Uh, you probably don't want to do it the way that I've done it, but it's um, it works. Now, I'm also using the Mark II pipes here, uh, which I believe might become an issue because the Mark Two pipes can sustain 600 um, cubic meters of fluid per minute, which means I am going to have to split this. No, 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 I'm not, because 1080 divided by 2 is 540. So, oops, sorry about that. So there's 540 water in each uh, loop. This, these pipes are the alumina solution. 540 water on each side of the... Um, and they both have their own dedicated water extractor. The next part of this setup uh, was then the the um, uh, the alternate recipe here, which is electrode aluminium scrap. As you can see, this outputs 240 aluminium scrap and 60 water per minute. And this is where I am overdoing things massively. But then again, this used to be a mega base. Then there's no reason for me to uh, not continue that trend. So I'm making a total of 2,880 aluminium scrap with a byproduct of 720 water. Now this requires 360 petroleum coke. And as I mentioned when I checked that in my uh, stream, uh, I was producing 240 petroleum coke, which I thought was enough. So I need to go and adjust the petroleum coke at the um, uh, the oil outpost that we have uh, over here, the uh, DCSE oil. Uh, I don't exactly remember what DC means. I know that the TF is something forest and the station we're at uh, is, I believe it's RS or something, uh, Red Swamp. Yeah, RS, Red Swamp Alumin Aluminium, uh, Desert Canyon, that's what it is, Desert Canyon. So I have this oil outpost in the Desert Canyon where I'm, it's basically just producing petroleum coke. Uh, I need to, to upscale the production of petroleum coke there because I'm producing 122 little. So the coal belt that I had set up here uh, is gone and uh, this uh, is now taking in petroleum coke again uh, through the two trains that I used to have. There, One of them is coming there. I can see that because it has cargo wagon number two. Uh, and that will be required for the alternate recipe that it will be making the aluminium scrap through that electrode recipe. Um, these, uh, on the other hand, had to be split up into three and three. So there are six, no, four belts. I haven't put up the fencing yet. Four belts. Uh, and they're all transporting 240 times 3 
which I think is 720. Yep. So there's 720 aluminium scrap on each of these belts, and there's four of them in total. Haven't connected them up yet. I will do so very shortly. But before we do that, there is this array of 48 smelters. They are using the alternate recipe again, the pure aluminium ingot. It means that you do not have to worry about silica, which would be a massive pain in this setup if I was to use the, um, the foundries. And each of these has been overclocked to 111.1111%, which gives me a target production rate of 30 per minute, because the default recipe is 54 to 27, but that's why I needed a lot of power shards, thus the slug hunting, because I needed 48 power shards for this. Um, I could have halved it, as in I could have built 24 of the smelters, and I could have overclocked them with three batteries, Thus, overclocking them to 222.2222%, which would have given me a production rate of 60 per minute, taking 120 scrap. So that's another option if you need the space. But keep in mind that that will draw a substantial amount more power. Well, substantial is probably overdoing it, since this one has a base train of 4. Um, but with 3 batteries, I wouldn't be surprised to see it at 30-something. I don't remember the exact calculations there. These, on the other hand, <clears throat> sorry, will then output um, 24 times 30 on each side, uh, which I believe is uh, 780. 24 to, no, it's 720. So there's 720 coming out on each side. Wait, 24 times 30, that is wrong. No, it isn't. So it's 720 aluminium ingots coming out, coming out on each side of the smelting array. So they each have a dedicated belt at each uh, at a separate dedicated level. Now what I did to connect these things up with the smelters was probably very, very overdone. I'm sure I could have done that simpler. But it's working. That's that's the, the main thing here. Thank you, autosave. Um, so the first two, they, they have been split up in, in segments of 12. So there's each belt goes to 12 smelters. And that brings me to a rather important point. If you overclock the smelters, you have a ratio of one refinery using the sloppy alumina to two refineries using the electro electrode aluminium scrap to six smelters using the aluminium ingot and that will give you a total of six times thirty 180 ingots which for most people you only need two maybe four if you really want to go overboard which means that 12 or 24 maybe if you operate in six on the smelting line that that should be the the um or seven if you don't overclock where you underclock the seventh so that is another option, underclocking the seventh, so that you get the uh, the uh, the round number, if you want the round number, that is. So these are now outputting the um, the aluminium ingots. This one isn't. Uh, why are you not outputting? Because you're not receiving the scrap. Is that because? Yes, that is because I have either connected you to the wrong level, and that is what I mean by I probably overcomplicated this. Because this is not going to be easy for me to see what have I done wrong here. I don't know which one I'm at at the moment either. Um, okay, so... One... 
two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so this one lacks. That's actually quite simple to fix, thankfully. It only lacks that belt piece there. Which I, for some reason, have removed. So by doing it altern alternating like I did here, um, that was not ideal. I should have done the two lowermost on this and the next the two uppermost on that. But instead I went lowest and then third, then second and then fourth. And I, I don't even know how I ended up doing that. It, it just happened. Um, are we producing ingots? on each and every one of these now that is the question keep in mind that the new copy paste function uh also pastes the overclock here we are i'm not sure if this is not producing or if it's just the phasing belts it's not the phasing belts so that means i lack a belt segment here as well There's a bug that doesn't show items uh, occasionally. Let me just check that that was right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes. Are you now producing? You're not producing because you're not receiving the scrap. And that is probably... because of the manifold uh, these others have to fill up first so uh, anyhow these are then outputting the ingots onto that belt which is on level 4 and the other side is outputting on level 3 uh, and then we have the copper ingots uh, which come up here on an elevator and those go down to level 2, which is the old level that I used for copper ingots. And then we have the alclad sheets. This recipe used to be, uh, for 8 assemblers, 480 ingots of aluminium and 180 ingots of uh, copper. With the new recipe, it is now... 240 aluminium ingots and 80 copper ingots so they basically halved the requirement of aluminium and they they didn't halve but uh halved and a little bit uh on the copper ingots and it still outputs 240 sheets so that's that's a nice little um, um benefit you don't need that many alclad aluminium sheets. Uh, they are primarily used for... Uh, for Did I? I don't want to insert that. Okay, so if you click 3, for some reason, that inserts power cells. Oh, because it is in spot number 3. Okay, I didn't know that. That is a handy little thing. So the, the thing you, you are going to need many of are these. The... Uh, Alclad casings, which, if you do not have the alternate recipe again, we should put up another constructor here. You would be using this one, which takes 90 ingots to make 60 casings, as opposed to this one, which takes 112.5 ingots and 75 copper ingots to 112.5 casings per minute. Now, this isn't really that much more efficient. Uh, 60 per minute, 112 per minute. Uh, it takes a lot more of uh, the copper, but copper is copper is not something that is rare. I mean, copper you find copper in, uh, copper or copper veins. Almost said veins there, which would be funny to someone. Um, so I consider copper free because you don't really need that much copper. So what I've done here is that I'm slightly underusing what's coming in. I have set up 10 of these assemblers and that is what we're going to connect up now. 
to make the casings. And through that I'm using, uh, let's see here, uh, 1,125 aluminium ingots. And for the sheets I'm using 240, uh, which means that I am using a total of um, 1,365 of a production of 1,440. So I could set up uh, another... Um, uh, assembler and I could clock it at 66% and then I would be using all of the uh, aluminium but I I can't see that I'm going to need more than 1125 aluminium casing. I know you need a bit of them I know because they are like one of the new main parts but uh, at 1125 I strongly suspect that is going to be enough now we also need to connect up the copper belt here, so we're going to do that. Uh, and we also need to see that all of the belts have stuff on them, which is kind of hard when uh, the bug... Maybe they fixed the bug. Yep, there is aluminium ingots. And this is the output belt. We are, we're going, we're, we are going to get back to that. So... I really wonder... Yeah, it looks like the screen flickers in the recording as well. I do apologize for that. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Um, that's probably been very annoying to you guys. But I need to alt tab so that I can check the spreadsheet. So that's not ideal at all. I hope that that is something that they can fix at some point. Anyhow, uh, we are going to need Mark II elevators for this. Do I have enough uh, reinforced iron plates? I, I have plenty of those. So, we... Let's start over here. I've set up six of them to take aluminium from the highest level there, which would be level four, and four of them to take from level three, and all of them take copper from uh, level two. So let's just connect up all of these. And this is a little bit of a pain, but... Uh, the game doesn't really care about that. And the autosave keeps harassing us. And again, I'd rather have the autosave than not having it. I'm very glad they managed to implement that as quickly as they did again. Because uh, in the build that I was playing yesterday, the uh, or in the episode yesterday, the autosave was not present, which uh, eh, not ideal. I mean, playing on experimental and autosave isn't working, and you forget to save, and uh, there was much gnashing of teeth and wailing. Okay, now what we need to do is set up this, and we can just copy the settings and go here and paste them. You can use Control c Control v for this. I am a bit confused as to why they decided to use those uh, shortcuts. I mean, yes, they are the default shortcuts in Windows, but... Uh, why aren't they... Res oh, bleh. They have no power. Power is a good thing, I've heard. They are also not remappable at this point. I hope that they add the ability to remap the copy-paste buttons because I would like them to be shift mouse click, for instance. Uh, the other thing is you can't just look at a facility. You need to actually open it to paste, which is also weird. And you have other games where that is absolutely not required, but uh, I'm not going to, uh, to get too hung up in minute details like that. I'm happy they added the copy-paste function at all because it severely uh, helps the, uh, the build process uh, either way. So maybe it's a little bit inconvenient that it's mapped to control C and control V and you have to actually open the buildings, but it's much better than having to uh, for some buildings like say this one and I wanted to produce the uh, coated iron canisters. Yeah, 12 buildings I had to scroll down there, and then I wanted to overclock them to 123% each. I'm very happy that I can just copy and paste. 
even if it's maybe not the best buttons. Okay, um, let's set up these um, mergers before we uh, connect the power. And as usual, we have to keep track of the arrows because the game likes to randomize the direction of the arrows for some reason. Coffee Stain, if you're watching this, would you please, please, please fix the issue with the merger sensitors randomly shuffling around? Very unlikely that you're watching this, but uh, you never can tell. I mean, they did watch my pipe tutorial since they linked it on Twitter once. So maybe, just maybe they are watching. And if they, if you are Coffee Stain, there is a, 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 a fair amount of players that would be very grateful if you could make these things snap automatically. Okay, enough about that. I think I did one too many here, because I don't need six on each side here. Uh, I need five on one side and six on the other side. Or did I do this? Oh, yeah, I did it the wrong way. That's not a big problem, but... That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, that's a problem. One more on top of these. And on the other side, we need to turn the topmost around. I believe this one is already set to be the correct way. Yep, it is. So, flip arrow. Yeah, now you work. <laughs> uh, uh, let's remove the extraneous ones because they are going to be in the way. Frankly, I managed to click shift. And those. Oof. Then we go to the other side and we do the same there. We remove the ones we do not need. I wonder if I have the autosave set to five minutes. Yeah, I do. I don't need that at five minutes. That is a bit aggressive. Let's set that to... 15 minutes. I mean, the only time the game has crashed on me is actually when I've started it up and tried to load the game. And they seem to have fixed that bug. There we go. There we go. And finally that one. And on the other side we need to do the same. And then we need to connect up the lifts. Like so. And lift go from here to up there. And as I've mentioned many times before, uh, to properly align the lifts, just look at the arrows. You can see the red and the green arrows there. Uh, when they align, as they do now, there, not there, not there, there, uh, it's aligned. If it doesn't look quite correct, it probably means that you have misaligned the... Uh, the splitter or the merger, uh, like it's one offset uh, in some way. And you also usually need to connect from the bottom up. As you can see, it turns red. It actually turns uh, green or uh, buildable here. But if this was on level three, that would have been red. So I always connect from the uh, bottom and up. Okay, now we need power. Um, so this is on this line. Which means that I should be able to connect a power line from there to there and then from there to there. Yes. And that one can connect up to that one. Not clipping, but... Then again, as I've mentioned before, I'm not overly concerned with clipping when it comes to um, 
to um, the assemblies themselves because it's going to clip through the lifts regardless uh, unless I build them much farther behind and that uh, creates a disturbance in the force which uh, nobody would want that. And that disturbance in the force of course would be that the assembly lines would not be as uh, compact. And I do prefer my assembly lines to be compact. There we go. They are now connected up. They are receiving the aluminium ingots. They are receiving the copper ingots. And I am receiving aluminium casings. That took some time. Oh, I have been working on this all day. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've had fun, uh, as always with Satisfactory, but uh, this has been time consuming. Uh, now we want to have, and it needs to be on that vector um, or line, so let's just place that there. Uh, this is going to be problematic. Well, not really, because it doesn't really matter if I just push it across here. So I think I shall do just that. I'll put it inside of the fence, because that kind of clipping doesn't bother me. Is that enough? I'm not sure. It might be too long. One, two, three, four, five. No, it's actually perfect. It is six. The distance is 6.2 or 3 or 4 or something like that. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it isn't enough. We need one more here. Uh, and I probably want to use Mark V belts. And this is the old silica flate, flate platform. Apparently I cannot pronounce ours now so this is the old silica freight platform and we're going to use that for the casings uh, I haven't looked at them what do they look like well they look very unfinished <laughs> I would say are they supposed to have that Coloration? Al bet? Is that what it says? I'm not convinced that they're supposed to look like that. This looks like a well maybe no, it doesn't make sense when you when you compare these two to other models in the game, this looks really low. Uh low quality. Ah, they're probably going to change that though if if it if that's the case. So what we want to do now is very simple. Uh we want to make Okay, so this one is there. We want to make this one here. And that goes up to 6. And I'm... Is that too close? I know I'm building the wrong lift here, but I'm just wanna... I just want... Yeah, that is too close. Meh. Okay. If I do it one further away then... Uh, go away. Am I allowed to... That's the wrong level. Uh, but it looks like I was allowed. Yeah, it doesn't look good, but I am allowed. Uh, so let's try that again. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, to be honest. No, it is too close. Okay, so I have to find another way to do this. 
Uh, and that way shall be... Mm, first and foremost, let's not open the map, but let's select the correct belt. Do this. Not happy with that because it's too close. I want to have a walkway here so that I'm able to walk. Two, three, four, five, six. I get a couple of those in my inventory, but that's fine. So we'll try this again. Do this down to this ground level, uh, the conveyor pool. There and there, and then connect, and that one will fit. And then we basically do the same thing one more time and hope for the best. I do think that it is too close though. It is. Uh, can I squeeze this in there? I can, but it looks absolutely horrible. Okay, so that is sufficient walkway, that is not. So, go away. Now the question is, can I? I will try. See if that is too long. It is not. Good. You need to uh, go away as well. And we take this down. And... Where, what? Why did you decide to stop snapping? And connect. And... Next, we build this. Now that I, uh, that I believe is too far away, uh, but it's worth the attempt. It isn't. Oh, that's very useful for me. There we go. And basically, this needs to... Let me just see here. This needs to come down to there. This is difficult, uh, the way that it looks right now. Can that connect up? Yes. So this one comes down to there and connect to there. And there we go. Aluminium casings using the alternate recipes. I don't know why they... Oh. All the platforms stop when one train is using one of the freight platforms. That's, that's interesting to know. It isn't taking from that platform, is it? Oh. Sheesh, it is taking from that platform. You're not supposed to do that. Ah, I need to find a solution to that. Oh well, I guess that means I need to build a fourth platform because I can't have it do that. That's... Either that or I'll have to switch the the um um coke and the um i'm going to have to i'm, I'm going to take these away again uh i could switch the coke going from that one to that one and then use that one for the containers but yeah that's not 
the point, though. The point is, I have made those bizarre-looking aluminium uh, casings, and uh, that means that I am done with the preliminary stuff in that regards, because we're going to need a lot of aluminium casings for recipes, uh, and I need these to go to the base and not to the outpost that is generating the petroleum coke, which is what happened just now. So, with that said, um, I might stream tomorrow, which would then be episode 2.5 or something. Um, if you want to be notified, you can either go to Twitch and uh, click the follow button there, and uh, Twitch will send you a notification if you're online on Twitch. Uh, or you can just come to the Discord server, uh, you'll find the link to that in the description below. Uh, and in the uh, FAQ and Rules channel there is a little um, reaction icon that you can press. And when you press that you get a roll and that roll is tagged whenever I decide to go online with streaming. So that is an option if you just want to uh, hang out. Uh, I am paying attention to the chat when I stream, so if you want to hang out and interact, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. Or if you're not interested in streaming or you don't have the time to come tomorrow, you can also watch those episodes when I upload them to YouTube uh, after the stream. Uh, or of course, uh, as, an, as another alternative, what you can do is just look at this series and uh, ignore the other one if you want to just see the highlights which is what i showed you now now if you have questions or comments as per usual do feel free to leave those in the uh, comment section of the video i am very happy to um, to interact with you guys and uh... part of me feels that they simplified the aluminium process which is good, but then after having built this, I'm not so sure that I agree with myself that they did, especially not when you're using the ultimate recipes. But the basic aluminium process, using none of the um, uh, alternate recipes, with the exception of the silica, which can be a bit annoying, you the, the recipe you used to use also needed silica, so... I guess they have simplified the basic recipes at least, which is a good thing. So, but there still might, you might have questions. I will do my very best to answer them. Another place to uh, to come if you need some more uh, extensive uh, tips, tricks, information, and not only from me, but from an entire community of people where there are several very skilled and knowledgeable players of Satisfactory, that would be to come to the Discord server. For now, thank you all so very much for joining me, and I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that I at least managed to be somewhat informative. Uh, and I will see you all in the next episode or in the stream. <laughs>